Okay, so I'm, here I'm going to work the problems in uh, BB350 problem set E. The first question says that a mutant hemoglobin is found in which a single amino acid is changed. The amino acid changed is the histidine attached to the iron atom of the alpha subunit. And then it says predict the effect this would have on hemoglobin's properties. Well, let's think about that figure that I showed in class where I have this set of rings. And in the middle of that set of rings, I had an atom of iron. So if I were looking at it from the top down, it would look uh, something that's not a minus. It should be a plus plus. That looks something like that. And if we were to turn this on its side, we would see that iron atom that looks something like this, where it was attached to the histidine from below, and from above, we could see the oxygen that would come in and bind it. So my artwork isn't very good, but I think you can get an idea. Top view, side view of the heme with the iron there. The critical thing here is the attachment of the iron to the histidine. Well, we remember that what's happening in the binding of oxygen by the iron of histidine is that oxygen comes in and has the effect of lifting the iron atom up out of the plane of the heme. So here's the heme, here's the heme right here. Okay. Well, lifting of the iron, of course, causes the histidine to also rise. And since the histidine is attached to all of the rest of the protein out over here, this slight change in histidine's configuration changes the configuration of every other amino acid in here and causes the protein to change shape. And the interaction of this subunit with another subunit that's over here changes and now favors its binding of oxygen. So it's because of this linkage to histidine that ultimately the phenomenon that I described in class as cooperativity actually occurs. Cooperativity happens because of this shape change induced by the binding of oxygen. Well, in the problem that I've just described, I've said imagine that we have a mutation such that we no longer have that histidine. So if we no longer had that histidine, what would happen? Well, the oxygen would bind to the iron as before, but since the iron wouldn't be attached to anything else in the rest of the protein, the rest of the protein would not change when oxygen bound. And since it was that change that induced cooperativity, we would predict that this mutant hemoglobin would not exhibit cooperativity because this protein wouldn't change on binding of oxygen and its interaction with the other uh, subunits of the protein would not change either. The second problem in problem set E says that a smoker is pregnant and carrying a fetus. Assuming the 2,3-BPG could cross into the fetal blood, what effect would this have on the fetus? Well, one of the things that we learned about in class is the fact that smokers have higher quantities of 2,3-BPG in their blood. So this pregnant smoker would have higher quantities of 2,3-BPG in her blood. We remember that adult hemoglobin, when it binds to 2,3-BPG, tends to move into the T state so that it releases oxygen. So therefore, uh, the adult hemoglobin in the smoker um, has less affinity for oxygen and therefore has reduced oxygen carrying capacity because it's more likely that when the um, hemoglobin gets back to the lungs that it'll still be in the T state and won't be able to bind oxygen. So the smoker is definitely, the pregnant smoker is definitely going to be affected by the smoking uh, for the reasons that I've stated because it has higher levels of 2,3-BPG. The question is about what happens to the fetus. Well, one of the things to remember about fetal hemoglobin is that it has a slightly different hemoglobin than does adult hemoglobin. Adult hemoglobin has the uh, configuration of alpha-2, beta-2 uh, subunits. And that's the molecule that makes what I called that donut hole of hemoglobin, where the 2,3-BPG binds. Okay? So this is in the adult. The fetus has a, a slightly different uh, hemoglobin. And instead of having alpha-2, beta-2, it has what we call alpha-2, gamma-2. The, the two beta subunits are replaced by two gamma subunits. And the effect that that has is it slightly changes the donut hole. And that slight change in the donut hole in fetal hemoglobin 
means that 2,3-BPG cannot bind. So because 2,3-BPG cannot bind in fetal hemoglobin, the fetus is actually unaffected by the 2,3-BPG even if it crosses the placental barrier because its hemoglobin won't bind to the 2,3-BPG. Now, the fetus will suffer from the sense that the mother's carrying capacity for oxygen will be reduced, and so there will be less oxygen available to the fetus, but the fetus's hemoglobin itself will result, have no effect uh, on the increased 2,3-BPG. The third problem says that a mutant hemoglobin is found in an individual that results in it having a much greater affinity for oxygen than normal hemoglobin. Predict the effect this might have on the individual carrying it. Well, on the surface, this might sound great. You've got hemoglobin that really likes to grab a hold of oxygen when it gets in your lungs, which is hemoglobin's job to do that. But the problem with that is, is that hemoglobin is really good at doing both things. That is, grabbing oxygen when it's available and letting go of oxygen where it's needed. So, for example, in our lungs where the oxygen concentration is high, hemoglobin has a high affinity. And when hemoglobin gets out into the tissues where the oxygen concentration is low, it lets go of that oxygen so the tissues can have it. The mutant hemoglobin described in this problem would be problematic when it got out into the tissues because it wouldn't be so readily letting go of oxygen and the tissues would end up being more starved for oxygen. So the higher affinity mutant hemoglobin here would be problematic in delivery of oxygen to the tissues.